how's it going? Welcome back. Ground Zero Salem with Pat once again. Listen to some H100s right now. Right in front of the stereo. And turn this down slightly. I want you to be able to hear it because I'm going to be just kind of spinning records while I uh, while I talk at you this time. This is a big VCLT update I'm doing. A bunch of gifts from friends if you're not familiar with the lingo. Final Community Love Train. Not cringy at all. Um, but regardless of what you call it, gifts from friends are cool. This is uh, a whole stack of seven inches I got from Ken over at Ken's Death Metal Crypt. Hit me up on Facebook Messenger and said, I, I have a bunch of, I think they're punk and hardcore 45s. I'm gonna send them to you because it'll be a better home than at my place. You know, I'm not really into the, a lot of this style of stuff. And I was like, oh, awesome. Um, turns out, you know, it's varying styles that kind of, most of which fall under the punk umbrella. There's a few that weren't quite my wheelhouse, so I'm just gonna just kind of share them with somebody else. Most of the stuff that he gave me is awesome. So the, the ones that are a little out of my wheelhouse, I'm just gonna leave not talked about, but like the stuff that I'm into, I'm gonna be talking about. This is H100s. I've been wanting this record for a while. Um, I don't think it's too exorbitant. I just hadn't gotten around to picking it up. Cleveland Hardcore from the mid 90s featuring Tony Urba. Um, he's a national treasure. Just super snotty, uncontrollable, violent, punk, hardcore stuff. Also, uh, Jason Hook swung by last weekend, gave me this cool shirt, and some other stuff that I'm going to be talking about. Oh man, this is over already, huh? Let's flip it over. So I got the shirt from Jason, uh, an LP and a demo. I also got some stuff from a new YouTuber named Chapel of Ghouls. This is his handle. He's on the streams a lot, commenting. His name's Sean, his real name. Um, I got a cool mixtape from him and uh, some other very random odds and ends. So I'll talk about that, but let's talk about this Ken stuff first. So yeah, 95, Clevo Hardcore, Snotty, um, kind of a thumb in the eye of like everything that was going on in their town at that time, like integrity and stuff like that. Kind of Japanese hardcore inspired, which was not a common thing at all at the time. Um, I think their drummer Wedge was like one of the first people to really dig into Japanese hardcore and order imports and all that kind of stuff outside of Pusshead. I think it was a very small thing at the time. Nate Wilson, who ran Gloom Records and Wedge and a few other people are the reason a lot of that made it to the shores at that time. Anyways, um, Rash of Beatings. This is mostly 90s stuff I noticed that Ken sent me. A lot of good stuff in here. Rash of Beatings were from Arkansas. This is just really well done, grind, hardcore kind of stuff. Uh, lots of blasting, kind of chopped up thrash metal riffs, uh, kind of uncontrollable Tasmanian Devil kind of singer. Really fucking good. Ritual, this surprised me, because this looks like a finished death metal record. Uh, Depravity, Silence of the Centuries, you know? Looks like that kind of cover art, but it's uh, it's goth. It's really early goth, death rock stuff. Like, just past, like, UK Decay. Like, early, early 80s, 80, 81, something like that. Really fucking good, like, death rock from that era. And they didn't do much ritual. They did, like, an album-length demo. This and another EP, and that was it. And this is, this is awesome, because I've been in the mood for a lot of that kind of stuff. Anything with a chorus pedal and like kind of crooning vocals, I'm, I'm all over it. So this is great. Uh, Gecko, kind of a similar genre. A uh, little later. I think this is from 91. So 10 years later. Also, yeah, kind of Christian deathy, kind of 45 Graves, more like goth leaning stuff, like somewhere in there. Those kind of screeching, echoing guitars that are common in that genre. They do it really well. Beyond that, I'm not sure where these folks are from. Um, did not look that up. Dana 60 and the Pistol Grips. This was the record that was like the little teaser when Ken sent me the picture. This was the one on top, so I looked it up immediately. This band's also from Cleveland. Pretty pretty snotty punk. Not as fast as this, a little bit more like on the, tra on the traditional punk side, but pretty good. Haven't listened to the flip yet. Public execution, but definitely the A side's good. A Solution, Butterfly. Another seven inch here. Well, they're all seven inches actually. But this is fucking great 90s crust. It's very metallic. You know, it's got the almost speed or death metal kind of song structures going on with it. 
there's a fair amount of like kind of DV influence and all that, but there's plenty of like tight kind of chugging picking on it, and um, it's just loose enough to be crust. Super furious stuff from Britain, uh, Scarborough, North Yorks. Pay him no more than one pound thirty p. Hibernoid, another British band. This actually caused me to go on a huge wormhole and buy both CDs by this band. I liked it so much. It's uh, super innovative, for lack of a better term, kind of doom death stuff, but also ties in a lot of that kind of like, kind of like post-punk or death rock influence, I feel like. There's violin on this, a um, couple of different vocalists, uh, just two songs and I was, I was pretty hooked. I got a couple of different CDs. One CD is an odds and ends CD, and they do go very into like electronic territory, but maintain the kind of death metal vocals on it. And it's uh, pretty interesting stuff, but a lot of it does kind of have like that Peaceville Doom kind of vibe, but even more so influenced by like um, goth music, death rock, that kind of stuff. Like Bat Cave kind of shit. Then uh, there's a Finnish band called Fuzzbender, and they sound exactly what you would expect a band called Fuzzbender to sound like. By that, I mean they kind of sound like the few bands that were around in the 90s that were doing sort of a, a stonery Sabbath kind of thing. They definitely sound like that. They sound like Sweet Tooth, if you remember them, um, and kind of like Deliverance era COC. You know, it's definitely Sabbath-y riffs, but very like crisp 90s production. Which is cool. I can get down with that stuff. I like Sugar Tooth. I like those uh, COC records, so I'm not mad at that at all. Um, this I haven't spun yet, so let's spin it, shall we? Got a Coalesce 7-inch. Coalesce is one of those bands... A safe place. I remember when this came out. Coalesce is one of those bands. They were around. I was around for them. All my friends were flipping out for them at the time when they were in the new thing because they are super crazy and, you know smash their instruments when they played. Uh, I knew that they kind of were sort of along the lines of bands like Resurrection and Dead Guy, you know, sort of discordant, uh, occasionally kind of angular, kind of noisy, but it wasn't really my thing so much at the time. Dead Guy was pretty much the only band I was interested in like that. And I got uh, some Coalesce stuff recently and been paying a little bit more attention to them and uh, kind of catching up with it. And man, you know, they're really good. Um, I got the record on Relapse. Name is escaping me right now. And I guess this came out afterwards. And I need to fix the belt on this. And here I go. I adjust the belt. And it's actually supposed to be a 45. Put the RPM on the label. That's all I got to say. Put the RPM on the label. Let's try that again. So yeah, you know, come to think of it, I can't even remember where Coalesce is from. Um, I wonder if there's information in here about that. This came out on Edison Recordings, which is a label out of um, Philly. And uh, it was a label run by this guy named John Dudek, who used to run Very Distribution. This great distro that had so much hardcore and metal, you couldn't even fathom it. It was like the average card table, you know, that you like unfold to like, you know, have an event at a bingo hall. It was like two or three of those. Um, super nice, mellow, like long haired dude, always had good recommendations. Sadly, he passed away a decade ago. It's been a while since the dude passed on. I don't know from what, but he, uh, he contributed a lot and he put out some really good stuff like he put out this acme record that i love uh german metalcore classic first overcast seven inch um this and as you can hear it's kind of a continual kind of like throbbing heavy riff kind of you know not quite not quite death metal but not really hardcore gym teacher dude like hate breed style either i like this you know, it's good and heavy and riffy. Just at the time, it just wasn't fast. And all I wanted to hear was fast. So while that spins, let's talk about some more stuff here. Got this Submerged. This is another Finnish band. 
weirdly, all the bands from Finland are labeled Finland. Oh, probably because uh, Ken organizes his collection by country, I, I think, more than more than likely. Because um, there's some other stuff in here that says Finland on it. But uh, Finnish band called Submerged. This is cool. It kind of sounds to me like post-death metal, like mid-90s. I'm talking like Nail Bomb, um, Fudge Tunnel, like heavy, mid-paced. Uh, Fear, Emptiness, Despair era, Napalm Death maybe. Pretty growly vocals, but like heavy, but not going for like a strictly traditional death metal kind of thing. Maybe a little industrially kind of influenced. Pretty good. Drowning Room. This is uh, on Trip Machine, which was, I think, a Long Island label. Definitely New York. And this is very much like uh, 90s hardcore that was crossing over. Um, early metalcore, if you want to call it that. You know it's a good merging because it has H.R. Uh, Geiger artwork, but like sort of almost collegiate font. Let's flip this over. More Coles. Um And it's cool. It's very much like a a product of the time. It, it's like pretty metallic, kind of choppy, sort of thrash metal riffs that are kind of like regurgitated and changed into something else. Um, and the vocals kind of jump back and forth from like a rougher, tougher kind of hardcore vocal into like a lower, a little bit more of like a singy sort of thing. Not really emo, but like sort of like an impassioned, like maybe like a late 80s, like turning point kind of deal. Um, I always, I really like this era of hardcore. That's the era of hardcore like I, I was going to shows at in the beginning, in the early to mid 90s. So definitely seems like something that would play at the Lost Horizon, my hometown there. Then we've got Painkiller Volume 1. This is a compilation on, uh, well, it used to be called Squatter Rot before this, but I think it had been called Devastating Soundworks for a while at this point. It's uh, Ralphie Boy from Disassociate, his label, who are on this. Disassociate were like, they got lumped in with like crust punk and, and that kind of scene a lot, I think, because they were squatters and they were kind of crusty dudes, but they were actually like fairly technically adept, like grindcore that was pretty creative. Had a lot of different elements going on with industrial and, and some other stuff, noise. And that shows with the, the stuff that he's kind of curated on this as well. We've got Corrupted. Great Sludge, I think Corrupted or Japanese, could be wrong about that, I'm trying to remember. Uh, disassociate with a weird, like, kind of like electronic remix of one of their songs. Uh, and then the B-side is Cement and Nerve Rack. I know one of these was almost straight up industrial and the other one was more like a, a slower crust or death metal, I'm trying to remember. It's been a week or two since I've listened to this. But it's a cool comp. It's definitely worth it for the Corrupted and Disassociate tracks. Then, got a couple of uh, Helicopters singles. This is Nick A. Anderson from Entombed's rock band that he did afterwards. Um, pretty well regarded and, you know, well respected in their own arena. It's good stuff. You know, it sounds like 70s hard rock, classic rock kind of shit. There's a little bit of like a Ham and organ on one of these songs. It's really fun, you know. It's definitely like booty shaking, kind of boogie rock kind of stuff, you know. Muscle cars, mustaches, the whole nine. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could really get into a whole LP of this stuff, but it is fun to throw on 45s. That's why 45s are good. And what should I throw on next, folks? Let's see. Maybe I'll throw on that Hypernoid. Which is pretty freaking interesting stuff. There it is. Hypernoid. This came out on PS Records. Um, the full lengths by this band, or one of them anyway, came out on Displeased. I don't know, it sort of reminds me of the Peaceville stuff, and it also sort of reminds me of like the very early Stenchcore stuff, which... Makes sense because it's relatively the same soil that it springs from, but um, but it's got a lot of that kind of lurching, mid-paced, heavy, um, depressive kind of uh, vibes to it. That's some pleasant, 
pleasant guitar for you. It says 45. Sounds a little high. We'll see if this is right or not within a few seconds. Next up, uh, Haters. This is Truncated for Micah. Definitely not my wheelhouse, but an interesting, interesting artifact. Apparently this band is like the first, one of the first like harsh noise or noise groups. And it's true, like I threw this on and it sounded like a cement mixer getting in a fight with a blender. But I mean, for the sake of being innovators, I guess, I know very little about this and I'm not sure if that's even right, but that, that's what the Google said. This came out on self-abuse records out of uh, Concord, Nor New Hampshire there, nearby. See, this sounds wrong to me. Yeah, that's definitely the wrong speed. So in case you were wondering, I uh, mentioned this turntable before. Uh, I have a love-hate relationship with it. It's a, a U-turn orbit. And like some other similar types of like um, entry-level audiophile, I guess. You know, nicer record players, but ones that sound don't cost a lot of money and sound good. Like a lot of other brands, the, the belt is on the outside and you have to adjust it yourself. And like, man, sometimes it just sucks. It just sucks. Anyways, hybridoid at the correct speed. So, um, yeah, so Haters, original noise band. Yeah, I wasn't really feeling it. Uh, I could see definitely thinking it was a punk band because of the sort of ransom note style. Cool layout. And there's a funny thing on the insert here that I was pulling out when I realized that uh, Hibernoid was at the wrong speed. It just says, the haters care about you. And it's got a guy in a luchador mask pointing at you. And then there's, a, I think there's an order form in here. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, self-abuse records. Hanged, Hanged Man's Orgasm was uh, self-abuse number one. Slughog, Eric's Bow, number three. I know that name. And then the soundtrack for the End of the World compilation CD, Native X, Condom, a bunch of all that stuff. I mean, I'm not super familiar with it, but uh, I know Condom and Mertz out, Mertz Bow. All right, so. The reason I was showing this though is that I think I'm gonna send this to Sean because he made me a really cool mixtape. Um, I thought, you know, just randomly, I think on one of the streams or something, I mentioned to Sean, like, hey man, you mentioned noise rock a lot. I don't know noise rock super well. Um, make me a mix. You know, I know Big Black, I know who they are. Um, I've tried to listen to them s several times, nothing has really clicked. Jesus Lizard, you know, I mean, I've been around long enough to know what these bands are and, you know, the importance of them. Um, so he made me this really cool 90 minute tape mix. Um, and as a thank you, I think I'm gonna send him this seven inch and a uh, mixtape of my own. Cause he'll probably appreciate the hater stuff more than I would. Um, but this is a, I mean, it has actually a lot of stuff I'm familiar with, um, which is cool, but nothing that I've really listened to that much starts off with a Mr. Bungle song that's almost like uh, almost like a speed or kind of death metal song uh, Stickmen with Ray Guns are after that doing Scavenger of Death which is a Bobby Sox cover I love the original I love those two Bobby Sox songs that I know Cop Shoot Cop great like two bass two bass players in that band like I always kind of thought of them as an industrial band but not really kind of like weird post-punk they are noisy Cows, No Trend, Butthole Surfers, Halo of Flies, No Means No, uh, Killdozer, the Killdozer song, Hamburger Martyr is pretty funny. Uh, Laughing Hyenas, fucking X Negative Approach right there, John Brandon's band after NA, Control Bleeding, um, then on the other side, Zenny Jiva, Drunk Driver, Brain Bombs, Twin Stumps. Gets a bit like more like almost straight up noise on the other side, uh, but there's a lot of good stuff on here. I've got a nice new fancy Walkman recently, and I it's got a good sound quality. And I just kind of like sat back and kind of made some made some food and listened to this, and it it sunk in really well. There's some good stuff on here. He also gave me this Pain Team seven inch, Sacrificial Shack, 
hard to say, at least for me. True story of satanic cult killings in Metamaros, Mexico. Um, yeah, it's kind of like weird, dirgy, kind of rock stuff, like heavy on like sort of distorted bass. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, I've only spun it once, so I can't comment on it too much, but got kind of haunting vocals. Um, wouldn't say it really belongs to one genre or another, I guess like more or less like alternative or something like that. You know, it's on the tip of my tongue. I want to say I've heard of these guys, but it could just be some iteration of Pain or Teens or, you know, I could have been thinking of Painkiller or Teen Generate, who knows, anybody's ball game at this point. Uh, Sean also gave me uh, Silence of the Lambs book on tape, <laughs> two cassettes, pretty fucking sweet. Videodrome, which I owned on VHS, but you know, good to have it on a couple of formats. Haven't seen Debbie Harry get wild in a while on that. Uh, and that's it for Sean's stuff. I mean, he sent me a PS1 game that I don't know where I put it. And a Poison the Well CD, which, thank you, but I am not a fan. Um, and uh, that, yeah, that about wraps it up for Sean. So then we got this from Jason. This is Gripe. This is a band from his area down there on the South Shore. This came with a couple of stickers. And this is like, Massachusetts hardcore through and through reminds me of a lot of stuff floating around in the late 90s up until may maybe the mid 2000s last in line um, cops and robbers all that great stuff all that great like back to basics raw pissed off hardcore with like kind of gravelly vocals um, not all fast either with gripe there's like a lot of like mid paced stompy kind of shit on here to get your blood pumping but super fucking good Mass Hardcore, always doing it right. And uh, finally, I got this Self Abuse LP from Jason. Let me flip this over here. Hibernoid Side 2. Get into it. With Pat Wilding. I'm your host, Pat Wilding. Um, yeah, this is great. This was put out by Loud Punk Records, which is a dude that Jason and I both know from Albany, Chris Lawrence. Hell of a guy, Chris. Really awesome dude. He had a short-lived record store. Maybe it wasn't that short-lived. I don't know. It was around for a year or two. I only got to go there once, but I got so much good shit, and I'm bummed that he is no longer at it. But he does uh, online stuff, sells stuff online, distro stuff online. So I'll put a link. Check him out. If you're into, like, UK82 punk, DB, that kind of shit, some crust. You know, some, like, early 80s NYHC, I'd say, is on there. I haven't looked at his distro in a while, but I probably will now and probably will spend 50 bucks, because let's face it, I have issues. This is great. This is a reissue of, uh, like, a UK 82. Looks like 83 is the actual year. But that style of Riot City kind of punk rock stuff. Very anthemic, very catchy, like, almost poppy, like, pub chant kind of style. Um really awesome stuff and it never ceases to amaze me how many of these bands were around in the early 80s that and like how big punk rock was in britain like they the alternative charts were full of stuff like this you know it was dominated by this kind of punk for a while you know there's a compilation called uh oi chart busters i just remembered because they were talking about this on jason's uh facebook page to get into it facebook page check it out um but they were talking about like Oh, it's funny, oi chart busters, like they're actual chart busters, and, and somebody corrected the person saying that, saying, yes, there were, there were like really big hits for street punk and oi in Britain in the early 80s. So it's only, it only makes sense that a band like Self Abuse might have gotten swept under the rug because there were so many, there was so much volume of this stuff, and this stuff isn't totally my soul, like, wheelhouse, like, this is kind of like a secondary pursuit of mine like this sort of like riot city um punk and disorderly you know compilation kind of punk stuff the older i get the more i want to dig into it it's this and db2 i'm kind of like filled to the brim with like death metal and nyhc kind of stuff which is kind of my my pet favorite subgenres. so i've been digging more into a little bit of this stuff and a little bit of like kind of like bridging the gap between punk and death rock like stuff like the mob and part one 
um, and also like Finnish hardcore and DB because that stuff is so hard to listen to at first until you develop an ear for it. Like I, I was listening to Rados today in the shower and I was like, "Fuck, this is so awesome!" But it sounds like a punk band like falling down a flight of stairs. Anyways, so yeah, self abuse though, easy listen, fun, easy listen, great, just like tasteful, catchy pogo punk from '83, Britain. Loud Punk Records, Chris Lawrence. Check it out. So thanks to all my friends who gave me free stuff. Oh yeah, also, Jason gave me this shirt. Poison Control. This is like a weird mashup of uh, Charles Manson and JFK. Uh, Mid-2000s Boston hardcore band. Had a lot of, had members of Ringers and Cut the Shit amongst many others. Very short-lived. They did a demo and a seven inch. They were around for like a year and a half and then they were out, but they were super good. Um, I think a bunch of their stuff is up on YouTube. Check it out. I'll leave links again if I feel like it, which I may not. Uh, I think that's it. Everybody, have a good rest of your weekend. I gotta fucking work tomorrow.